Today we're going to be talking about conservation efforts, and we're talking about things that we do, uh, especially as humans, to conserve the resources or protect the species that we have around us. Um, they are done, um, you know, in an effort to protect the things uh, that we find all around us. So whether it's a resource and it's something that we need, or as whether it was something that we simply enjoy and we don't really need it as a resource, we're not getting anything, anything out of it. It's just simply um, protecting it because we want to preserve it for future generations to see. So um, this is something that was started uh, a while back, probably early in the 19th century, um, where we started to look around and say like, hey, you know, we're expanding a lot and we're building railroads in a lot of different places. And, um, you know, at least here in the United States, this is something that President Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, was like, you know, we've got a lot of pristine land. Um, we should start setting it aside. We should start forming national parks and that sort of thing. So he was one of the first pe people, at least at the federal level in America, to say that we need to you know, look at these places and we need to uh, kind of rope them off and, uh, you know, and prevent people from expanding because these are places like, you know, Yellowstone uh, and Yosemite National Park. And these are national parks and places that are just kind of unique um, and they're not found anywhere else in our United States. And so we need to do what we can to protect them. So that's kind of like where we started with the protection of the resources and, and the land. Um, and then the species um, that came about as a result of really the use of DDT. Um, DDT was a pesticide that was used. Uh, a book was written uh, called Silent Spring, which basically theorized, uh, the author Rachel Carson theorized that if we continue to use DDT, then we would have a, a spring where we woke up and there were no songbirds. Uh, DDT has an effect where it weakens the shell of birds. Uh, but anyways, that's where people started to take notice and that's where uh, what, what really took people's notice, especially in the States, was that the birds that it affected the most were American bald eagles. And so as uh, being our national bird, people were very concerned about that. And so that uh, and their eggs disappearing led to uh, the enactment of the Endangered Species Act. And so we have the endangered species list. Uh, and so we really started to look at it. And, and, it. and it makes sense from a standpoint of, you know, when you look at an ecosystem as a whole, you have all these moving parts and you really don't know all the interactions that happen between every single organism. So re to, to remove one, may, it may seem as simple as like, oh, it's just this certain species of tree and there's lots of other trees. But if it's a tree that just so happens to be, you know, a source of uh, shelter for one particular species of bird or one particular species of squirrel, then that can have a, you know, a, a cascading effect on all of the other organisms there. So we really started to look at our resources, really started to look at our species diversity uh, and decide that it was time uh, that we start making, you know, a real concerted effort to protect these things. Like I said, not just so that we can look at them in future generations, but just for the stability uh, of the ecosystem. So, you know, once a species is extinct, it's gone for good. There's, we're not going to be bringing it back. This isn't Jurassic Park. We can't do those types of things. So, you know, once a species is extinct, it's extinct. And the same thing can really be said for land, too. Once a land, uh, you know, mass has been altered, um, it may be able to come back if it were completely left alone. But normally, you know, in today's day and age, once we've renovated something and, and turned it agricultural or turned it commercial, it's going to stay that way. Um, and so, you know, we had, like I said, we have this beautiful, pristine land um, all around us. And we said, you know, we should really set these aside and, and not allow, uh, you know, mining or commercialization or residentials. You know, none of the national parks, we don't have people living there in houses and things like that. It's just kind of a home for all of the natural organisms uh, that make their home there. You know, obviously, with whether it's expansion or whether it's just, you know, people needing a place to live or whatever, um, those are problems. But in addition to those, we as humans also have a little bit of a problem with the waste that we create, right? So we have pollution that goes into the air, into the water. Um, so that's a problem that creates a lot of problem for a lot of these lands. So we wanted to make sure that when we were protecting them is not only that they, we weren't cutting down trees, but we also weren't introducing any type of pollutants. We didn't want to pollute the water. We didn't want to pollute the air. Um, um, so we made sure, you know, the area around these places was conserved. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure there's no foresting happening. Um, you know, we're not logging for lumber or anything like that in these areas. Uh, like I said, these are natural resources that we rely on, but there's plenty of other places um, throughout the country where we could get um, these types of resources uh, when we need them. And, and like I said, we really started to look at biologists and ecologists really started to look and say, look, you're cutting down trees to get wood, but you're also cutting down the homes of a lot of different species. 
species. Uh, these organisms, um, they live in trees, and when you remove all the trees, their homes are gone. So it was, it was uh, you know, high time that we decided to do that. And we also understand that biodiversity, that variety of life, makes um, an ecosystem stronger. Right. Um, And it also like we rely, you know, as humans, as we've talked before, we rely on the biodiversity. I mean, the clothes that we wear are made from plants and the houses that we live in are made out of wood. And, you know, even the cars that we drive come from, you know, fossil fuels are powered by them. So there's a lot of different things that we rely on. So it's it's not only just for the preservation of future generations, but it's in our best interest uh, to set these things aside and to preserve them. So. All these conservation efforts are attempting to uh, reverse these effects that are caused by pollution or expansion. And then if we can't reverse them, at the very least preserve uh, what we have without doing any more harm, right? Um, One type of conservation effort um, is protecting individual species. So there's a lot of different ways we can do this. One of the most effective ways is to put that species on the endangered species list. Uh, That makes them um, illegal to hunt, illegal to trap, poach, uh, anything like that. Um, They are basically protected under federal law, and anyone who, you know, does anything to these species can be prosecuted uh, with a felony. So, uh, like I said, it's a a start. Um, We also, usually when we're looking at protecting species, uh, in addition to putting them on the endangered species list, um, we may, um, you know, help with repopulating. So whether we're doing, um, you know, a, a breeding program. Um, you know, maybe it's, maybe if it's a small enough population, it may just be happening between zoos, right? And then we're reintroducing those organisms into the wild, or if their numbers are okay in the wild, uh, we're, we're trying to help out those, uh, those breeding populations in the wild, right? So, um, you know, we've done this with a lot of different animals, um, you know, globally, right? Um, look at African elephants that were hunted, um, you know, in very high numbers for the ivory in their tusk. Um, they are on the endangered species list. It is, you know, anybody who hunts an elephant, um, you know, is going to be breaking a law in order to do that. It's a start. Are elephants still going to die to poaching? Unfortunately, yes. Um, there's, there's, you know, people have found ways around that and that sort of thing. But uh, as it exists, uh, they, it shouldn't be happening to, to protect those elephants. Because like I said, there's, you know, you, you think, uh, you know, there's, there's thousands of elephants and that may be true. But if, you know, if, if, you know, hundreds of them are allowed to be hunted every year, it doesn't take long for a population to dwindle down, right? Because if everybody goes on a hunting expedition and says, well, I would like to shoot an elephant, uh, you don't have an infinite number of elephants. So another effort uh, is repopulating a species. So uh, that's something that really uh, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums is really good about. They will find good mating couples uh, in an endangered species and bring them together, or they will pair them up so that we can get offspring. Because ultimately, that's what we need, right? If a a species is endangered, the way to bring them out of uh, endangerment is to get their numbers to go up. And and to get their numbers to go up, they need to reproduce. So another effort uh, that we do in conservation is to preserve habitats and ecosystems. So this kind of goes back to protecting the lands, setting lands aside, um, you know, conservation workers working to get specific plots of land set aside for, uh, you know, for as legally protected land. So this is where these animals, this is where these plants can grow and they don't have to worry about, you know, being farmed for resources or, you know, pollutants entering that environment. Um, And so there's a lot of work there in just making sure that the habitats um, stay preserved. Uh, We've done a lot of this in the ocean as well, right? Uh, To ensure that, you know, estuaries stay, um, coral reefs, um, uh, kelp forests, all those areas are are critical to the survival of of marine life. And so we do our best to to make sure that they are preserved. Um, Biologists, you know, when they're doing this, are going to work to find the best spots um, for reserves, uh, they're going to look for a place that contains a lot of diversity, right? And a lot of species that are perhaps in danger of extinction. And they're just going to say, okay, there's no hunting here, all of these species. Uh, and this is difficult to do because you've got to get, you know, multiple agencies to agree to this because you may have some people who say that, you know what, um, you know, we make a lot of money by allowing people to hunt here, or we make a lot of money by logging these trees. And so you've got to get a lot of different parties uh, involved to say, say, we are not going to cut down any more of the rainforest, right? Well, the people that are logging the rainforest say, hey, you know, what are we supposed to do? This was our source of income and we make quite a bit of money, um, you know, cutting these trees down. So like I said, it's a lot of different agencies working together. Here in the United States, we have our national parks, uh, like I already mentioned, um, and we have, you know, forest, natural forest, and we have a lot of protected areas. But again, that wouldn't have been done 
um, if we hadn't started when we did. Because again, we were at a time when uh, Roosevelt was in office that we were expanding really, really quickly. And fortunately for us, he had the foresight to kind of say, you know, we, we need to set aside these large chunks of land um, so that people um, don't screw them up. <laughs> so um, a big area of conservation is containing the pollution and destruction that's being done. So, you know, that's a fight every day to, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult fight because, uh, you know, in order to produce the, the resources and things that we need, uh, you know, we, there, there has to be some type of, of you know, process process or manufacturing going on. It's just finding the best solutions that benefit both people and the organisms living in those environments. So many organizations and governments are wanting to change policies on what industries can use and produce. And so, like I said, that's a, that's a big um, component of this conservation is, is getting the laws changed to say, look, you can't put this into the environment or you can't use this particular product because it harms this species. So again, it's, it's kind of getting all of those parties to agree. Um, so things like lowering carbon emissions, uh, the amount of water that certain products use, right? Water is not a, a finite resource. Um, polluting the water, uh, just protecting those ecosystems from destruction in general. So um, a lot of times now what we can do to incentivize groups uh, is the government can offer tax breaks to those who lower their carbon output or that use different sources of energy. So that's one they, you know, and it, it works out well. As, you know, the company may spend more building a building, but if they're getting tax breaks, uh, they're helping their environment and they're paying less in taxes because they've decided to, you know, um, input some of those green um, choices into their, into their building or into the infrastructure of their business. So no matter what it is, these conservation efforts are important uh, into preserving uh, the biodiversity that we see here on Earth. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.